Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, the thing I love about football, in fact, me growing up, I grew up in the Washington, D.C. area, which was difficult because back in those days, the Washington football team was winning Super Bowls, and there weren't as many Cowboy fans as there are right now. And the thing that was great to me was actually – Dallas versus Washington week. That week, the air was literally electric. You know, if you were a Cowboy fan, you were talking smack to the Washington fan, and the Washington fan was talking smack back and forth. In fact, players, unlike they are today, where in the offseason they work out and they exchange jerseys and stuff, uh, back in the day, the only thing they exchanged were punches. They could not literally <laughs> stand each other. And I miss those days, and I've been hoping and praying that the Washington football team and the Cowboys could actually play games that meant something, to literally be able to knock the hearts out of the Washington Redskins fans because, you know, we keep them from getting the playoffs or in the knock them out in the playoffs. It just hasn't happened. But I have been working on trying to build this rivalry back up. And, and doing this, I, I'm, I've actually found a new – Washington football fan to me, my man, Rio. Rio, how are you doing today, man? I am excellent today, man. We're getting closer to the season, so I'm doing perfect right now. Okay, so Rio, introduce yourself to everybody so they can get a little feel for uh, getting to know you and so on. Okay, my name is Rio Robinson. I'm from Northern Virginia, and I'm a huge Washington football team, formerly Redskins fan. And I just started creating content a few months ago, and I do a podcast called Rambling About Washington. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the newly founded fan ambassadors of the team, and I'm a first-time season ticket holder. And I want to take people on that journey and on that ride with me as we're transitioning into this new identity here in Washington. Okay, so you, you've been a lifelong Cowboy. Excuse me, Washington fan. I'm sorry. It's it's forced Ooh, to have it for me to Cowboys say fan. Cowboy fan. Okay, <laughs> so so how did you become a Washington fan? I'm just curious. And and when uh, I, you're younger than me, but then who isn't? I mean, you know, uh, only things that aren't older <laughs> than me are like the mountains and dirt and things like that. But uh, how did you become a Cow uh, Washington fan? I, see, I keep. Keep doing so it. You, you're trying to recruit me to the dark side and it's, it's not going to work, man. I, I appreciate the effort, though. But <laughs> now I've been a fan. It, the burgundy and gold was put into my blood since the second I was born. My pa I was born in 91 where the best football team of all time existed. Oh. The 14 and two Washington Redskins won the Super Bowl versus the Buffalo Bills that year. And my family was always at the parades and. I grew up wearing jerseys and stuff. And when I turned six years old, around 97, 98, I started getting into the sport. I started understanding it about 99, 2000, right when Mr. Snyder bought the team. Mm -hmm. So I haven't seen much relative success in my lifetime as a fan, but it's very character building. And I love this team. And they're like a part of my family at this point. Yeah, I remember that 91 team because they were scoring points like crazy. But see, you really, you know, and, and I, it's hard for me to describe what it was truly like. Uh, back in the 80s, the 80s, because I, I again, grew up in Virginia, too. And uh, the defensive coordinator, Richie Pettibone, his kids went to school with me. His son, Richie Jr., uh, was a linebacker on our team, played at uh, uh, University of Maryland and stuff. And mm -hmm. Joe Gibbs, his son, J.D., was the quarterback of our crosstown rivals. But back then, football wow. was totally different. I mean, literally, uh, and it's hard for people to understand, the, the newspaper talk, but that became bulletin board material, you know, where you had guys like um, uh, Dexter Manley. I'm going to clean Danny White's clock out. And it was really a hatred. But the biggest thing was actually the trash talking that went through it. But unfortunately, after that 91 season, you know, it's been rough for Washington. And since Dan oh, Snyder took over, I think there's a curse <laughs> of leaving D.C., um, and going to Maryland, and I don't think Washington will ever win until they go back to D.C., but that's my own personal thing. So stay in Maryland. I'm happy with that. So <laughs> do you think, so Rio, you know, you've got your podcast and you've got your YouTube channel and, and check you out. Do, do you do much trash talking? Oh, hell yeah. I, I love to talk shit, and <laughs> that's what I do. Like, I, I, know, I know a little bit about this football stuff, but I love to talk. <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> okay, yeah. so do you think – the Cowboys Washington rivalry is coming back. I think it I think us being relevant 
consistently will help that rivalry come back because Mm -hmm. I think we're a a good football team now. And that's like the first time I can truly say that in being a fan. And you guys are always irrelevant, no matter how much you fail in the postseason or not live up to national expectations. Y'all are the brand. Y'all are Apple of the NFL. Y'all are Apple, the Microsoft the Disney of the NFL. So your brand is always there. Our national relevancy will keep that rivalry or revitalize that rivalry. And I think it'll pick up going forward. Well, definitely. I I have to agree with that one. So I've gotten a lot of, okay. Washington fans have been kind of dormant for years on my channel, but I've got a lot of them that have come to life since last season and, you know, basically talking about how great the team is. And, you, you know, you got no chance in hell, literally, uh, Cowboy fans, and that you guys are just going to dominate. Are, are you on that side of the fence, or are you a little more cautious on where the Washington team is? Oh, I'm optimistic, but it's definitely cost. Of like, it's definitely, like, cautiously optimistic. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, if anyone is going to dominate the division, but I will say I do think we're poised to win the division for back-to-back years, which does not exist in the NFC East. It's been since like 04, 05 since it's been done. Oh, I think we three have and the four. team to do it. Three and four. Huh? It was actually it was 2003 and 2004. Three, 2004. Donovan McNabb and the Eagles. Yeah, it's been. It, oh, now, yeah. now, here's the thing you're fighting now. You, you realize that on average, teams that win the division the following year uh, – lose 3.3 more games than the year before. Yep. And, in fact, no team, including Super Bowl winning teams that have won the division, the best anybody has done is just held serve and, and didn't, you know, same record. So you think that the Washington football team is going to bust that wide open? Absolutely. I think we're going to win a division. And the main part, like our defense is what our defense is. They're going to be, they're going to be even better this year because I think we were overrated a little bit at times last year Mm -hmm. and we took advantage of some bad quarterback situations. but I think they're going to take a step. Yeah, we took it. Yeah, exactly. I'm willing, like I'm a real, I'm a realist. Like I'm not going to give you some burgundy coated lenses opinion. I'm, I can be (laughs) realistic about my team, but I think we're in, the best position to win the division. I do think the giants are like, if Daniel Jones takes a step forward. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Big if, but if Daniel Jones takes a step forward, they could be scary because I like, I think they're a well-coached team and they have good talent around the board. And what's up with your guy? Is Dak healthy or is this, is this all like fodder from the media? Is is he? he? Yeah, he's back full go. No restrictions right now. Um, I, I personally, I think a lot of that was done for the drama effect. You know, Jerry Jones loves the drama. He loves the Cowboys being talked about, you know, which is the reason why, you know, like you said, that we're the Disney world because there's always something to talk about. It was kind of strange to me how, you know, Dak would throw before practice or he would then go outside and stuff and do work and things. I think that this was all whole, you know, baffling with bullshit. I'm not saying that he wasn't injured, but I think it was made up <laughs> worse than what it really was. And I, I will take, say, an 80% Dak or 90% Dak over a 100% Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, facts. Well, he's the best player in the division, easily. <laughs> for now until Chase Young takes that next step but we're not going to talk about that but Dak is definitely the best player in the division hands down I was praying that you guys were going to botch the contract situation and let him <laughs> walk as a free agent I was I was holding my fingers like this man yeah. I thought it's like to have a quarterback of that caliber so I mean him alone being back makes you guys a problem but mm-hmm. I think like between your offense and our defense those are the two best units in the oh, division, yeah. and those will be probably the deciding factors of who wins the division because That's I think definitely. those units far trump what the Giants and Eagles present. The thing that kind of mystified me is, you know, I, I understand the Ryan Fitzpatrick signing because Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know, he, he, he has some really great games, and, you know, having started now for eight different teams, I think it's an NFL record for a quarterback. <laughs> yeah. But he's always been the guy who gets the next guy ready, which is you know, not, not a bad thing. I'm surprised that you guys didn't look at trying to get a young quarterback in there as well in the draft. You look like you're surprised too. <laughs> I was, I was surprised. I was almost sure. I watched, I had a draft party with a couple of my boys who also do podcasts for the team. And 
as Justin Fields and Mac Jones were sliding, I was so certain that we were going to hop yeah. up and grab one of them. Like I was so certain, but we didn't. And exactly like you said, Fitzpatrick is always the guy that got like, he's like the, like the movie. Good luck, Chuck. He's the guy that sends you <laughs> on to get married. Like the, you're going to get, have a great relationship after me. That's right. what Fitzpatrick is. Yeah. We don't have that guy currently on the roster. And that ultimately is the only reason why there's some skepticism on my mind right now, because we've put a good roster together, but there's still that's, no long-term answer. Right. That, that seems like that's the Achilles heel. And it's kind of like, Rush, like Rush just said, you know what, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick, it, it, when I hear people talk about, well, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick plays well, you know, uh, and I'm kind of like, but we're talking about a guy that's 38 years old and it's been around. I'm kind of like, you're, you're expecting something that, just hasn't been there. He's going to toss the ball around. He will do the deep passes, oh, but sure. and he will have that streak of about four games or so that does real well, and then all of a sudden it just kind of tails off, which I think is actually an advantage for the Cowboys because we're playing you late in the season both times. Oh yeah, we got that. We have we run through the divisional gauntlet to finish the year. We have five straight divisional, which games is crazy. To the year that is insane. Crazy. It's- so, it's insane. We got the Giants week two, and we don't see the division again until December. That's insane. I've never heard of that. Yeah, uh, that's uh, go figure. But you, <laughs> you know, you guys are going now. Your defense is going to be tested this year because you've got some really quality quarterbacks that you're playing. Uh, I mean, basically, we have the same schedule except for three games. Um, we play New England, and supposed to you playing Buffalo. So you got Josh mm-hmm. Allen. Um, we're playing Minnesota with Kurt Cousins, and you're playing, of course, the bad man with Aaron Rodgers. We're playing Arizona, and you got Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks, along with Pat Mahomes and, of course, Tom Brady. Brady. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you want to put um, uh, Matty Ice into that category, but no, you've also got Justin there. Hubert that's in there as well. Um, other than that. Kirby. Yeah, yeah, that's that's some good quarterbacks. Now, like I said, three of those quarterbacks Cowboys won't face. Instead, we got Kirk Cousins, uh, maybe Cam Newton. I don't know. We'll see how that works out. And yeah, yeah, it's gonna be Mac Jones by that time. Yeah, right. <laughs> Mac, it might be Mac Jones week one because you know uh, Cam so. getting the uh, getting COVID and stuff. He's been looking, you know, actually pretty good and stuff on there. And you know, with, with the, the interesting thing with uh, Bill Belichick is. Every first start that a quarterback has had for him, as in their first NFL start, they've always won. Isn't that insane? Yeah, that's crazy. That, he, <laughs> that's, uh, it's that's insane because, coaching. yeah, uh, it <laughs> didn't matter if it was Matt Castle. It didn't matter if it's Jimmy Garoppolo. It didn't matter if Kobe it was Brissett. Joby Brissett. Right, Jaco- how you get you? <laughs> Dude was like behind, you know. You had Tom Brady who was suspended, and then you had, of course, Garoppolo. He was the third-string quarterback, and, and because of injury to Garoppolo, he steps in, and he gets a win. How the hell does that shit happen? Mm-hmm. But um, must be nice. Yeah, it, it must be. It, yeah, you're looking at that. It's like, yeah, and we've got Heineke and we got Fitzpatrick and uh, hey, and- that Heineke I've over here is like. Listen, I was very entertained and so impressed by what he did in the playoff game. But there are folks in this fan base who think that Heineke is going to be Kurt Warner, and it is fucking insane. <laughs> like- <laughs> I won't say that that can't happen because you know, did, who who thought that Tony Romo? Would have been Tony Romo, right? You know, a Correct. undrafted rookie free agent. So I'll I'll never say never. I mean, you know, sometimes all of a sudden guys get it and get on a run. And if you have a coach that can develop it and they're not rushed, and you have the players around them, yeah, it's possible. It's possible because yeah. you know a lot of times I think what happens is, you know, it depends on the situation that the quarterback goes to. You know, you've seen Cleveland drafting quarterback oh, yeah. after quarterback, but they weren't in a system that could actually develop the guys and literally killed their confidence. I hate to say it, but, you know, Washington has been the place where quarterbacks' careers die. Oh, for sure. For I mean, sure. I've seen I've seen so many quarterbacks come and go here. Like, the, like there's a jersey oh, that geez. gets passed around like the Browns do, where there's like 34 quarterbacks' names here. Like, we've started like nine quarterbacks in the last three seasons, and that's ridiculous. Yeah. So I see teams that have started one guy for 20 years or 15 years, and it's absurd to me. I can't even fathom what their life is like. 
And see, that's the thing that's crazy to me because, you know, Cowboy fans, we got spoiled. To, to, I'm not saying Tony Romo's a Hall of Famer or, or you know, the best quarterback Romo's in the world. Great. But Romo was a good quarterback that had we had everything else around him and a bit of luck. We, we got the curse of Jerry Jones, of course, that's killed him. <laughs> but to go from Romo to Dak Prescott and not having to give up any draft picks, okay? You know, I think about the RG3, the three number ones in a second. I think about a number one you spent for Haskins. I think about the money that was spent on Kirk Cousins, uh, you know, the money spent on Alex Smith. And Alex Smith. And, 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 you know, it's just like quarterback. And it's like, guys, you don't see what's happening. around. It's not like, you. It, oh, we just pick up another guy and he's going to fit. It's like it, it's hard to get a quarterback. And I know Washington is like. If you guys got a great quarterback, the city would be so behind him and so loved. I know because it's he's just gonna, been he's gonna so be long. a savior. He's gonna he's gonna be treated like a savior in this town. And I think a lot of the problem when it comes to quarterbacks is coaches' ego. They like a lot of yeah. coaches. They have one way they see things, and instead of trying to curtail their offense to the guy that they pick, they try to make him do it a certain way. And that's why the mm-hmm. team that drafts you in your situation matters just as much as the player when it comes Without to quarterbacks. A doubt. Without a doubt. And that's been Jason Garrett because, you know, it always would drive me crazy because Jason Garrett would say, that's not the way we do things around here. It's like, okay, you ain't winning shit. So the way you're doing things around here ain't working. Maybe you should be looking at it from a different point of view and trying something different. But, yeah. um, So, well, you know, I know you got to go and and everything else. But um, with this whole fan experience thing, that's the ambassadorship. That actually sounds really, really cool. Uh, that you're doing with uh, the Washington football team, it seems like they're trying to change the narrative of some of the bad publicity they've had and some of the situations <laughs> with some of the people in the front office and stuff. Um, can you tell everybody a little bit about um, like some of the things you got coming up that you're going to be doing that'll be like really kind of interesting? Okay, well, um, yeah, as, as, since we're like in a complete makeover facelift with the organization right now from top to bottom with Tanya Snyder, Dan's wife, taking over as the CEO and face of the team. Now Mm -hmm. our team president, Jason Wright, 39 year old, first 39 year old, first African-American team president in the league, which is crazy that we're still doing these first in 2021, but they're just bringing new life. Joey Kobe Bakovich come over from Carnival Cruise to run our He's the vice president of guest experience for the team. He started the Fan Ambassador Network, which is about 35 fans. We're splitting the categories like culinary, community, culture, entertainment, which is the category I'm in, and fashion. It's like we're giving our input and being the bridge or line of communication from the fan base to the team. And they want our input. That we're getting focus groups. We're all giving our opinions on things and. We have little quarterly meetings where we're discussing certain things. And you can already tell the difference. I was out in Richmond for training camp a Mm -hmm. couple of weeks ago. You can check those vlogs on my channel, by the way. Um, The the vibes are different. It's a close-knit family-type organization now. Like, they're all walking around. Tanya Snyder, Jason Wright, they're walking around, talking to people, and it's genuine. It's not like, look at us. We're doing things differently now. It's They're just out here actually including us and – Everything feels different right now. This is mm-hmm. the most genuinely optimistic I've felt about this organization as my time as a fan. And our team president is awesome. I've met him a couple of times. I've spoke to him. We've even done the electric slide together, which you can also <laughs> see on my channel. Okay. And I'll be vlogging from the tailgate from the stadium all season for home games. And you'll definitely see me and Mark hooking up for some NFC oh, yeah. East talk, man. Yeah, sure. definitely. Definitely plan on getting getting a nice segment in here and stuff. So everybody, definitely check out Rio's channel. Go in there and tell them how much you hate the Washington football team. But remember, listen, <laughs> no personal attacks, okay? We can be friends and stuff and Hell dislike yeah. each other's team. In fact, uh, speaking of tailgate, you know, the last tailgate I did was actually at FedEx Field, and we do one every year. Last time we had about 400 people. Uh, there, I cooked like 140 pounds of chicken wings on site. We had 15, 15 pork shoulders. We had my man E2 Blue as a DJ. Uh, you know, we had the big screen TV. It was a party. And there were Redskin, excuse me, Washington hey. fans. They were Redskin fans at that time. For the hey, don't, don't worry. We're gonna have a, we're gonna have a name soon. Is don't it worry. gonna be the Red Wolves? <laughs> you, you, it, 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 it seems like everybody's thinking think, that's what it's gonna be. I think the Wolf, some variation of it. I think. 
without the red, though. I think it's going to be Washington Wolves. That's me personal. That's my personal opinion. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was into making the brand thing, and we got to see some logos and some name ideas. I'm not speaking on anything. Thing I've seen there. My personal preference is Washington Wolves, yeah. but I can tell you for sure that a name is coming. We are not going to be the Washington football team as of 2022. I don't know how they're going to keep it from coming out before the end of this season, but uh-huh. a name is coming so we can stop saying this long, awkward ass <laughs> gas station type name, the Washington football team. <laughs> you know, I kind of like it because I, I like saying that, you know, you're not even a football team. You have no name because technically you guys kind of <laughs> lost the copyright for football team. That's still kind of being, I mean, you're not even a football team. But, you know, the yeah, last we're thing I'm going to ask from you is, what is your prediction for the season? What, what, How many games are you guys going to win? <laughs> Please feel free to kill me if I'm wrong about this. But I started with 9 and 8 when the schedules came out, but my optimism's gone up after seeing some things up close. Mm-hmm. I'm going to predict for the first time in my lifetime Uh-oh. as a fan of this team, an 11 win season. It's going to be 11 and six. We're going to win 11 games this year. We're going to go 11 and six and we're going to lose in the divisional round to the green Bay Packers, but we're going to win the division for the second year in a row. And there's going to be some type of big trade made in the off season to either move up the draft or acquire an established quarterback. And we're going to be rolling into our new name, the Washington wolves with a, a, a franchise quarterback, and all the momentum in the world to run this division for some time. All right, I heard that. You know, I've actually said <laughs> a, a eleven and six myself for my Cowboys. So I, I mean, I'm, that, that's okay. that's what I, you know. Someone's that, gonna do it. Now, now, of course, you know, we got Cowboy fans. Oh man, we going seventeen and oh, it's like oh, God, no. It's like look, <laughs> there's so many variables that are out there. You're gonna win some games that you shouldn't. You're gonna lose some games that you shouldn't. And you don't know how injuries or now COVID is going to play on your season. No. So, you know, I believe we're going to win some games. I think we got a favorable schedule and all that. I'm not going to go crazy. I think 11 and 6 is, is reasonable. Um, Washington, I think it all comes down to your quarterback situation. 100%. Yeah. Because the defense is going to keep us in most games. So, if we can, our running game and our weapons are massively upgraded and. It really will come down to Fitzpatrick just being adequate on a consistent basis. Be better than Alex Smith and Dwayne Haskins were, and that's a baseline for success for us. Well, there you go. All right. So, Rio, I appreciate you coming on here. We definitely want to do some stuff together. Uh, You and I have been talking back and forth about some different ideas and concepts and stuff because, you know, I can be, uh, yeah, I can can, can definitely have some debates on the Washington football team versus the Cowboys and stuff. I'm down. So, uh, again, tell everybody where the name of your channel and where to find you at because I know you're all over the place. Oh, yeah, man. Rambling with Rio Robinson on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Rambling with Rio Robinson. And my podcast is called Rambling About Washington. You can find it on any digital streaming platforms. And y'all can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Rio underscore Robinson 91. Stirring things up, talking shit. But it's always a good time because I love this shit. All right. I appreciate you guys. Now, you guys know what the deal is. It's time to turn out the lights. This party's over. Party's over. <laughs> they say that all good things must end. Call it a night. The party's over. And tomorrow and next year starts the same old thing again.